Daniel Dan from Florida Coastal Everglades, and Matt Ryden Matt from UCR. All right, hey everyone. Uh, news first. Uh, we have a new information manager, Gabriel Kamini or Gabe. He started in fall 2022. Then uh, we are also working uh, full steam on our FC5 renewal, which is due next year. And there's a shiny for me coastal connection supplement with uh, multi across multiple sites, which has been recommended for funding. So getting into our scaling, spatial scaling at FCE is predominantly interested in uh, the changes in primary productivity and soil accretion and loss and plant community transitions. So in response uh, to hydrological presence and pulses, well, I think something did not load up well here. Uh, so the challenges we're facing is that uh, numerical interpolations um, are very difficult to do um, across ecosystems and landscapes. And that is mainly due because we have very heterogeneous landscape at very small spatial scales. Uh, the processes are spatially dependent. This is the wrong talk. Sorry, uh, it did not get uploaded. Um, uh, I'll, I'll try what, what I can no, do. No. You can do it? I can do Sorry, it. yeah, this is uh, <laughs> completely. <laughs> You'll see, uh, it's much different. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So we're back. Um, Still some simple stone shrub well, but that's okay. So we have a very high heterogeneous landscape at small scales um, and the uncertainty of our representativeness of our long-term data sites is mainly because as you can see here, we have two transects and they're mainly in the deeper slough areas. And so those are not very representative for the entire landscape. So instead of doing numerical upscaling, um, we try to transfer of discovery of processes at our long-term sites in combination with experimental data to then scale up to the landscape, because we know certain processes, we expect certain uh, patterns across the landscape to emerge over time. So we're using uh, remote sensing to detect these changes on the landscape, uh, where those patterns are confirmed and where they're not confirmed and where they're not confirmed, why do they vary, how do they vary? And then um, based on that, we can then have new hypotheses inform us our new hypotheses. So, uh, let's go down to the site in the uh, southeastern saline um, Everglades. Uh, we know from our long-term uh, data that increases in phosphorus and salinity leads to an increase in productivity of above ground uh, vegetation, but it also leads to a decrease in below ground productivity. Uh, another thing that we found is that landward migration of mangroves, which is not surprising with sea level rise at the same time. And then, uh, Based on all these findings, then we wanted to confirm whether this productivity we can actually see from remotely sensed data at the landscape scale. Um, here we used our, went through our neighbor's uh, trash, uh, used the NDVI here and mapped it against the, end, the distance from the coast. And uh, we did this for two communities, the mangroves and the cladium. And what we expected to see is that uh, there's a productivity where the confluence of the marine and the freshwater happens, that we have an increase in productivity. And we see that exactly here, cladium increases from towards the coast versus the mangroves and the sparse communities also increasing in productivity towards that confluence. <coughs> Um, that landward progression of the pattern is then expected when the uh, sea level rise is further increasing, we would then make a uh, predict that our mangroves are moving further inland, and the same time also our low productivity following it when the salinity gets too high, killing all the graminoids and reducing the lower uh, the productivity. So um, we used the remotely sensed data very high resolution, two meter resolution from work view two and lighter data. And we made two different maps in 2010 and 16. We look at the changes over time, class changes between those two times. And then we scale those changes up to see where an increase in cover percentage <coughs> happened across the landscape. And then we use that and model this change um, as a function of distance to coast as kind of a proxy for salinity. <clears throat> so what we, did we see? We see that uh, three specific Bumps, the black line is the mangrove uh, change over time. And we see as a function from coast on the X axis, the change in proportion of the cover as we go um, inland. And so you can see what these uh, three different humps um, correlate to a uh, zone, a band on the coast, one a little bit further inland and one uh, much further inland. 
but uh, what communities were rep replaced? So what we could confirm is that mangrove predominantly replaces gladium, nothing new there. But at the same time, we also found that actually the low production uh, productive zone that we expected to maybe move inland because of this high salinity is not happening at the rate that we're wondering, that we were expecting instead, we see actually a replacement by Rhizophora, which is good news, actually. So when we look a little bit closer at this, we see that the highest um, productivity is actually close to Taylor Slough, which is a major influx of fresh water. And the same time, we see a similar pattern um, over here on the east, where we see little creeks and closer to creeks, also this expansion. Um, the high productivity is also confirmed from lighter data where the trees are also taller. So it's not just denser, it's also taller close to this fresh water. And so when we look at the distance from creeks, um, we see that the, um, about, at about a one kilometer, this cover increase of mangrove is constrained to that area from the creeks. And uh, combining now this uh, prediction from this distance from creeks and from coast and make a model, we can actually get a pretty good uh, resemblance of our current cover of the mangroves, but they're still residuals, <laughs> of course. And now looking at those residuals of the models, now we can come up with new hypotheses and then come up with new um, methods to explore them. So it changes perspective. We're not losing more ground in the white zone, it seems like. So it seems to be contained. Um, it might be even shrinking. And then the new hypothesis that Rhizophorus expansion spatial expansion and productivity patterns are probably correlated to discharges from fresh water, which now we're trying to get the data, hydrological data to confirm that. Thank you.